Yes. Okay. Uh, hold oh. on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Oh, Not Vince, now. Sorry. Vince, Vince. It popped up a window for Dropbox. Okay. You are recording. You're all set to go. Three, two, one. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Michael Mantell with another Family Law Matters. And I'm always privileged to be here with Bonnie Rabinovich Mantell, owner and managing partner of the Primus Family Law Group. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks very much. Bonnie, let's cut to it. We have uh, in our society, thankfully, since about 2014, 2015, uh, acceptance and legal recognition of same-sex marriage. And uh, I like your thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, of course, like with any marriage, comes family law matters, uh, divorce. And I spent a fair amount of time looking at what are the divorce statistics for same-sex marriages and the data is all over the place. All over. Uh, I, I'm wondering what your experience is here, uh, based in San Diego, and uh, in terms of same-sex divorce, are there issues that are unique? Uh, are parental right issues of concern? What's your experience? Well, actually, um, like you said, since the legislation changed and it is legally recognized as it should be, um, we we're well, we treat same sex marriages just like the same way as we treat heterosexual marriages. It does not change how property is divided. It does not change the presumption that children born of that marriage are the children of the marriage. And so you proceed exactly as you would with any other family law matter. Um, the petition it has been changed. So when somebody files for divorce, you file a petition. In California, we are a no fault state, so it doesn't matter who's the petitioner, but you file a petition and that form needed to be changed when the legislation changed to include um, those that were still registered domestic partners, because before they could legally marry, there was a, another way that they could be recognized as a couple. And um, then it was, you know, we are married in the traditional sense. And then now you have the same sex marriage designation as well. So the petition has changed to allow for all of that. It goes the same way. And, you know, I think that uh, some people think, well, a, a same-sex marriage is going to have a higher divorce rate because, well, there's, you know, and no, you don't know. In fact, the data says it's about the same. The rate is about the same. And uh, the only thing that I, that I have heard that causes friction in me when I, when I hear, I mean, I cause myself friction when I hear it is this issue of paternity rights. Um, you make a very important point about parental rights. Talk well, about that. There's a really big distinction, okay? If you're gonna, when we talk about marriages, um, there is a presumption that a child born of the marriage is mm -hmm. of those two parties. So just because you have a same-sex marriage, that's not where the parental rights issue comes in. It's when you have a child and you're not married. When you're not married, it used to be that you had a paternity action because you were trying to determine the father. You can only be certain, obviously, of the mother. Um, that obviously is not inclusive any longer because now you have same-sex marriages where you have a, let's say in one case, it is to Mom, two moms and one biologically had the child and the other one is now out of that situation because we can be certain of the mom and so by birth obviously so the other mom has to establish parental relationship that's why we changed it from a paternity action because obviously she's not another mom not a dad mm -hmm. um 
It obviously works a little better when you have two fathers, one who's adopted the child, or if there's a joint adoption, you know, those issues can come into play as well as to a paternity or a parental relationship action in that regard. When so, there are when there are two fathers, that's interesting you mentioned that. Um, and how does it work? If, I mean, in terms of uh, one of the fathers may be the biological father of that child. Mm -hmm. um, how, so how does the parental rights work in that situation when there's well, a divorce? Well, if there's a divorce, again, and they're married, um, usually the presumption is there. If people are going to play games and try to claim, no, this is my child, then you have to establish that parental relationship. And it's the parent who holds out this child as his own. There's a specific code section that allows a person who's not biologically related to the child, but this has always been dad or mom, um, and it's in the best interest of the child to maintain that relationship, can be a presumed parent and can then be that parent with the same rights and obligations that any other parent would have regardless of DNA. So the good news is when a same-sex couple uh, who's having family law matter concerns, w let's say divorce, comes to you at Primus Family Law Group, um, your experience, the savvy of your staff and your team uh, is able to help this couple, regardless, move through the system well protected, well cared for. And if they want to talk with you and get some more information about this, how can they reach you at Primus Family Law Group? Well, they can reach us at 619-574-8000. That's the direct line to the office. And then say, say that one again. 619-574-8000. And you can get on our calendar for a free 30 minute phone consultation, or you can go on our website, primusfamilylaw.com, or even email us at info at primusfamilylaw.com. And all of those ways will let you um, reach us. Thanks very much, Bonnie, for another wonderful edition of Family Law Matters. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, Michael.